I sat down with CEO Casper Rorstad this morning, asked about whether he sees any sign of a slowdown in China. We grew 16% in the first quarter and 14 in the second, and I wouldn't really overestimate that. We still see China as a very, very attractive market, and we still believe that will also be the case you know, for the future. So we're not seeing any significant slowdown. Of course, in any given quarter, you might have variation, but we're not seeing a change, a substantial change to the market. So still great opportunity for us. What about the currency? It has weakened past a significant level. Obviously, it's a huge deal in the tensions between the U.S. and China. How do you estimate the impact of that week are you on on your business going forward? So actually, if you look upon it, the, the biggest worry we have are not tariffs. It is a trade war, a currency war between America and China. We do 25 percent of our business in China. So, of course, the devaluation of the Chinese currency would have a significant impact for us. It's been more or less stable for the last three months. But that is one where we believe that nobody can win. There's a lot of, not a lot of mitigation we can do. Uh, so we hope that uh, a certain amount of normality will come in and the Chinese RMB will remain stable also for the month and the, you know, the quarters to come. What about the new round of tariffs that are announced on the remaining U.S. imports from China? How much will that affect what Americans pay for Adidas sneakers? Not at all, because uh, we do 25 percent of our business in China. 20 percent of our manufacturing capacity is in China. So for the U.S. consumer, I can say the U.S. consumer will not see any impact of you know, the current plane of tariffs uh, going into the U.S. So we're happy to say you continue to buy our products at the right price in the U.S. even after, you know, the second set of uh, tariffs coming in out of on, on the Chinese products. So where is most of the product, the apparel and sneakers that we buy in this country actually made? Uh, a big, big part of it is made in, made in Vietnam, Indonesia, Cambodia. So most, you know, the biggest part is made in those countries and will continue to be made in those countries. We changed our manufacturing landscape in the last four years before this trade war even started, simply to diversify our efforts. So most of the stuff we manufacture in China is for China, and that's why we're less exposed to this. However, of course, you know, the normal U.S. consumer that buys normal shoes in whichever store in, in, in the U.S. will be impacted because a lot of shoes are still being manufactured in China. Talk to me about U.S. market share. Feels like Adidas and Nike are both really at the top of their game on innovation, taking shelf space at the expense of Under Armour. But tell me how you characterize the competitive environment right now and how you see your positioning. So I was in the U.S. In the last week going to Minneapolis, Milwaukee, Chicago, and Boston, we continue to see a very you know, competitive market in the U.S. There are really two winners right now in the U.S., as you said, Nike and us. And while the competitive environment remains tense, there's no doubt that there's been a consolidation in the last three to four years around Adidas and our other competitor. And we hope by bringing new innovation in, whether it's 4D carbons or 3D printed products, or collaborations with Kanye or with Beyonce or Fer Pharrell Williams will continue to remain, you know, you know, will continue to make us very attractive in the U.S. market. And Kylie Jenner, David, their latest celebrity endorser. Um, big takeaways for me, the U.S. consumer is not going to feel any impact when buying Adidas apparel and sneakers from China on this latest round of tariffs. None of what we buy here is actually made there. It's made in other places like right. Vietnam and Cambodia. They diversified their supply chain, I guess, over the last years four ago. years. Interesting. And also, it was that. kind of a backhanded jab, I don't know if you heard, at Under Armour and some of the others when he, he was just saying this is basically a two-horse race in the U.S. between Nike and Adidas. It's consolidated that way over the last few years. That's where the fight for shelf space is, and that's who's growing market share in this environment. And part of Adidas' strategy continues to be on these celebrities. Beyonce line coming out at the end of the year. We talked a lot about Kanye West and Yeezy. I'll play that on Closing Bell. We always do. He's got to be their number one most valuable seller right now in terms of sneakers. Hey, Kanye, do you know? We don't know. I mean, it's, it's rumored that he has a billion-dollar contract, but I've never been able to, to confirm. He, he provides a pretty big halo effect. Last week, they, were, they had this crazy easy day where they re-released all the old styles every hour or so. There was a lot of heartbreak on the Internet, let me tell you. Right, Hard to again, get. Of course, you know this I, as I know well, this. as we pointed yes. out. If you have uh, a yes. sneaker collector in your family, yes, that was a big day. Yes, Sarah has a significant sneaker lover in her family.